I did spoke to you about, uh, I mentioned to you about my grandfather being killed in 1975 at my age four. And now it's time for me to make a little, expand this argument. Yeah, well, the one who 100% was behind the murder of my grandfather was Josip Broz Tito. Due to my visits to Belgrade at age, beginning the age six months. Why would he do this stuff like this? Why would Josip Broz Tito go and kill somebody who was more qualified to be a president of Yugoslavia than Josip Broz Tito. Why would he go and do something like this? Josip Broz Tito murdered my grandfather because Because of quite an issue that Josip Broz Tito got himself into. This was, for instance, a Secretary General of the United Nations, but this was not the first Nazi that Josip Broz Tito met with. Uh, something that was unheard for those times Something, however, Josip Brostito have blamed on me. Um, you maybe would say really, really unusual. That a two, three, four year old child would be blamed for the stuff like this. He, there was, this was not the first Nazi Josip Broz met with. Uh, but Josip Broz did exactly what I stated. On one end, in front of the international politicians, he would express gratitude in front of me, to me, for the industry that entered Yugoslavia. Yeah, this was, Slovenia was under the occupation, under the Yugoslav occupation. Uh, and it was exactly this, what Josip Broz got in return for what Josip Broz, with his Western partners, have used. And to blame me for doing something like this. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, to rationalize, to apologize. So somebody had to be guilty. It was not Josip Broz Tito. It was instead, it was two years old child, three years old child, four as I was growing next to this. Yugoslav Chetnik, Russo-Serbian Chetnik murderer. Assassin, mass killer, whenever delivered to the Belgrade city. This is the way it was. Even a child can take responsibility. This is such an evil child, is basically, I was, that this poor man right there, you see, did not know anything about Kurt Waldheim being a neo Nazi. But this is just one instance. Josip Broz Tito apologized. Nazism, basically.
through many other meetings with Nazis. Um, my grandfather was an individual who was more educated, sacrificed more for Yugoslavia than Josip Broz Tito did. But, and it was not only my grandfather, there was a whole list of other people that were easily could settle and were more qualified than Josip Broz Tito to become a president of Yugoslavia. This is just, it happened so that they selected him. He was in the right place, at the right location, at the right time. Uh, so, did not apologize a fall and breakdown of Yugoslavia afterwards that followed. Uh, did not forgive his mistakes he made for the whole country cracked down into nothing other than through the Chetnik hatred into, into ashes, basically. My grandfather was ahead of the family, even that it was my father that purchased part of the house uh, given by my grandfather to the sister of my father. Yeah, my father had a daughter and son. Son was my father, a daughter was a woman that married a man from Montenegro who also was, he also held the ranks of the general in the Yugoslav National Army. Pejovic. Uh, today, a grandson of the Pejovic, <clears throat> I don't know, because I don't follow NBA anymore, but he can be still seen, uh, is uh, Sasha Vujovic. It's an NBA player who got into NBA literally also through abuse, torture against me. Uh, why would he, Josip Broz Tito, go and murder a guy like this, a guy whom others have compared with Adam Schindler's, uh, Schindler's List, uh, a guy who saved uh, a number of Jews, smuggled them, and so on. Why would Josip Broz Tito go and murder somebody like this? Uh, for obvious reasons to depict me as ultimate evil, a grandson of the man like this, to destroy entire family was necessary. Uh, in this case, Josip Broz Tito decided the first casualty of the family, the first man murdered to be, was my grandfather. As long as the grandfather was alive and at home, the Udba people, the Serbs, uh, Yugoslav military, uh, officers that were becoming in our house. They had these people coming all the time in our house, police and so on. They couldn't do anything about anyone in the house. Uh, they couldn't do anything to my aunt. Uh, they couldn't do absolutely to anybody. They couldn't do absolutely to anybody, anything, because it was my grandfather that <laughs> This is the guy that they knew in the Soviet Union. They knew about my grandfather. They, people knew in Moscow about my grandfather. This is the man you don't want to go mess with. He was not Udba peep. He was not an Udba guy. He never ever participated in any assassinations or anything like this that Yugoslav army carried out. Uh, he was solely on the mission throughout his entire life, saving lives, literally. Uh, and associated not only with uh, Yugoslav, with the Belgrade, and with the Moscow, but he was a representative of the United Nations in Slovenia, in Yugoslavia, in this part of 
the country in Yugoslavia. He was associated with the United Nations and he was honorary uh, representative, something in that sense. Uh, Josip Broz Tito had a problem to depict me. To depict me as ultimate evil was a difficult task to complete. The first one on the list that had to be removed, killed, was my grandfather. My grandfather was murdered just about maybe one year after he was thrown into home for the elderly people in Maribor. In this home for elderly people in Maribor, I did not even Google one yet. I want to go there personally and I want to see, meet people, see. There should be also people still there, maybe, if I'm lucky, uh, that have committed themselves, that gave the oath to the Serbs, will get me killed when I get old. Uh, actually, when I grow up enough to be thrown inside of the home for elderly people. When I say gave oath to the Serbs, uh, this website here that you see here is associated closely with what I stated with the home for elderly people where my grandfather was murdered. Pronaji Drugove is Bivše JNA. Administrators of these websites or kids of the people that serve military as a Yugoslav national army. Uh, were located in Celje, uh, some of them in Maribor, of course, but in Celje. Celje was the most notorious, murderous uh, military installation in entire Slovenia. There was no more murderous installation, military installation in Slovenia than the one in Celje. And I don't know what went on in Maribor, but Maribor made a really poor impression on me. I've seen large number of people uh, mixed with Serbs in Maribor. And I'm not afraid to tell you this. I don't like this. I don't like the idea about committing something like this. For me, it's a gross offense. I don't know how it all happened, but Slovenian women were raped at large. Males, if they had anything to say, however, would disappear. And inside of the psychiatric hospitals, prisons, through the forced joblessness, exile, and so on and so forth. Very disappointing when it comes to Maribor. Maybe it was a price that Maribor had to pay, but this tramp of intermixing with the Serbs in Maribor area continued after the Yugoslav National Army was thrown out of Slovenia already. This man that you see right there was Pronadri Drugove is Birše Jena. This guy is from Celje. He was involved in MK Ultra. Uh, back in his day, he was a drunk, violent, ultra violent drug. In the back, you can see the military installation. This was in the city. Uh, this is where the main officers, like a big ranking officers, were. Uh, this was then turned probably into a center, into the main city building in the city of the Celje. Uh, so I think he was Jansha or um, Boucher, they told me, yeah, you're going to see this when you go. And the name of this uh, building right there is Kasarna Jože Menihrajko. This was a Yugoslav military installation, military installation known as a Jože Menich Raiko. The torture in this installation, while it was present, was nothing when compared to the military installation of Vojašnica Franca Rozmada Staneta, uh, also in Ecelia region. Uh, this is because this building here was more in the center of the city, and Serbs employed by this military installation feared that they would somehow be, uh, they feared Slovenian people. They knew that there was a large resistance, underground resistance that went on. 
It was the same thing like in Eastern Germany. We have the Soviets, and then you had the Stasi. Now, the Stasi, not necessarily everything was Stasi. A lot of people, most of the people in Stasi disliked the Soviet occupation and have rebelled against the Soviets, against the Russians. Uh, what I can tell you about the military installation of Franz Jozefa, this here, uh, Ros uh, Franza, uh, Rosmana Staneta, is that this was a total bestiality performed. Uh, the psychiatrist, such as Karadzic, became indicted as a war criminal through the Hague, were involved in my case since my childhood. And so was Zoran Muja, a psychiatrist from Ljubljana, half Serb. Uh, as for the psychiatrist Peter Kapsch, I will never forget when he departed to serve the military service in the Yugoslav National Army. He was associated with my family already way before I realized. Um, psychiatrist Peter Kapsch, at one point in time, uh, it even looked like he's going to date my sister. Even this is how things turned. Uh, he was associated with my family, is an individual that my family knew from the past. Yesterday, as I walked, I went over memories related to psychiatrists. Therefore, more people, is what I'm trying to say, more people that served in the Yugoslav military, UNA, and I managed to pull some that served in Bosnia and so on and so forth. We'll continue to work on it because all I have is my memory, which I can use to pull de facto files on who, where, how, who served, how, where, how, what went on and so on. This was a bestiality that was performed upon every visit to the home for elderly people in Maribor, where the Serbs and also Nova Mesta police officer, it was a Nova Mesta police officer who had uh, a face, you know, like, um, well, I, I am not gonna go and profile right now people, but one had a light hair, and uh, I'm trying to think of some actor or something like that. But this is his face is like really face from uh, face from here, I would say. And I'm not going to pull anything like this. So, yeah, actually, I will. I am going to pull something. Uh, I am gonna, uh, I am gonna pull something. He somewhat looked like Doimir Leshniak. Somewhat. Uh, somewhat he looked like Goimir Leshniak. Yeah, Goimir Leshniak was involved in it, yes. But here we are talking about something else. We're talking about the police from the novelist officer. Who, he somewhat looked like this. Uh, back in the day when he was not so. Okay. Somewhat like this. This man was also involved in my case since my childhood. Um, this was, however, uniformed man from the Novel Mesto Police. Doesn't look anything like you see right there, but more or less I'm giving you like if I even get to the facial expression, not quite like this, more or less something like this. Uh, he, this man was not fat. This man was in a shape. This man was in a blue uniform police officer. He was uh, from Nova Mesta police station that oftentimes would go uh, with also what were uh, Serbs, uh, they had these Serbs that would go and they would transfer them back and forth. And in this home for elderly people, it was always a must to stop 
at these military installations, both military installations. Uh, military installation, this here military installation, and another military installation, the one I demonstrated you, Rosa, Ro, uh, Stan at uh, this, where the hell is that thing? The other military installation, this one here, sorry. Rosman, Stana, Stana, Rosmana. Yeah, it was always, this was worse than fucking Guantanamo. I did mention to you psychiatrists a little earlier with a good reason. The reason why I mentioned to you psychiatrists is, here's why I'm going to plug the camera in so that you can see me. The reason why I mentioned to you psychiatrists such as Zoran Muja, such as Karadzic, and military installations is, but the Yugoslav National Army uh, commenced a new program through me. It was Josip Broz Tito who issued a brand new program to the Yugoslav National Military and to the Udba killers. Uh, it, uh, was, it consisted of a blueprint for what would be like a life of person that would basically get you would walk like a fine line, yeah, and could get killed at just about any time. Fine line at just about any time. That means that they would involve, they involved, not that they would. They involved the military installations throughout the Bosnia, throughout the Serbia, throughout the Slovenia, and they would torture me inside of those military installations. See, I forgot about this stuff. I even started to blame others for my... Uh, for the issues that went on and did not even understood what the hell went on, but now I do. And so uh, let's put it this way. Um, you grow up enough to serve a military service uh, in, um, let's go back. Before you get to the kindergarten, you get tortured inside of the kindergarten. Before you get to grammar school, you get tortured inside of the grammar school. This is, this is what Josip Broz Tito invented. This was a blueprint, a genocide for the Josip Broz Tito, a blueprint for the genocide of Josip Broz Tito. This is how it was in Yugoslavia. Before you go to a high school, you get tortured in the high school. Before you go to the military, you get tortured in the military installations throughout Yugoslavia. Well, before you end up inside of the home for elderly people or in institution for mentally disabled people, just as it was in my case, inside of the psychiatric hospital, they torture me before they deliver me there. They tortured me inside of the home here next door to home for elderly people in Novo Mesto, uh, home for mentally disabled people. Once you go there, once you come there, and you get to see your teacher that tortured you. You get to see your lieutenant, superintendent that tortured you uh, in the military. You get to see Inside of the psychiatric hospital, I got to see, uh, in the military, I have not seen. The people where I served in the military were not participating in torture before I would uh, commence the military service. That I have to tell you. Uh, for, for, for absolutely everything else, it was. And what is disturbing to me, uh, they didn't stop when Slovenia became independent. Janez Janša, Igor Baucher, uh, argued in front of me to make impression with the Serbs. Uh, Serbs. For the Serbs, was not a problem to move out of Slovenia. For the Serbs, the main thing was to get me murdered. For the Yena officers, for all the Chetniks, high-ranking Chetniks, it was not a problem to go out of Slovenia so much it was. They lost. But they knew that going after that argument is going to end up with the more Serbs killed on the streets of Slovenia. They understood that they are going to be whipped 
their ass is going to be whipped here in Slovenia. People couldn't see them. They couldn't stand the Serbs anymore here. They understood that issue. But they negotiated at all the costs. Continuation of genocide against me, for which Janez Janša and Igor Boucher both had even problem insisting them that the case is over. They negotiated with them in the background, that the case is over for me in respect to what evidently were a military installations. But the case was not over, even in respect to military installations. In a little bit, I'm going to point it out in my disappointment. Uh, Serbs used Milan Kuchan, Borut Pahor, Dernoshek, and others to pressure Janez Janša and Igor Baucar on must to continue with the torture in a newly founded independent state known as Slovenia. I'm going to tell you exactly how it is. There was about four locations, the most violent locations, that they stopped upon Slovenian independence to use against me. They kill you, they bring here, they turn you into a mental patient through the torture that was worse than the people that undergo in Guantanamo. In Guantanamo, people get tortured, so it's a certain things, information that leaks out of them. But in the case of the Yugoslav National Army, in the case of the Vladimir Putin, in the case of the Russian Serbia, that's why I also stated to the United States of America that you have my permission to use a nuclear weapon or whatever weapon might be necessary to overpower uh, Vladimir Putin. You do have it. You do have. When it comes to the Serbs and when it comes to the Russians, anytime you have it, you have my permission. I am going to explain to you what goes in this video, what goes beyond German Gestapo, beyond German SS, beyond Joseph Stalin, Joseph Stalin, Red Army crimes. In this video, I will explain to you. When you go to the Guantanamo or you go to any kind of um, prison, military prison, they torture people. Uh, the goal is to get information from people. The goal is to uh, find out what these enemies are basically hiding. If there is like important information, you have to access that information. But in my case, the goal was to murder, to kill, to brain kill person. It's basically to waste you completely. So the stuff that we are talking about in my case was all the time with... It was all the time about... It was all the time about getting you killed, shoot you, kill you, demonstrate me in many ways, uh, make you choose between the people and then portray the people that would side with me, how they got killed. By the way, when my grandfather was killed, they demonstrated. They over and over and over pointed me out, the people who murdered my grandfather, and they wanted for me to retaliate against them. They wanted for me to get the words about commitment, how I am going to retaliate against them. The whole system was designed to anger, uh, then torture, make you always fear for your life, like make you feel like you came like millimeters from death. Turn one into absolutely into a mental patient completely brain kill dead individual that would go into the normal settings in a real life, back in the school, back in kindergarten, back in uh, life. Uh, totally, totally brain killed. The whole thing was also supported with electroshocks. This is what Yugoslavia was. That's why I said, if you need to use whatever weapon you need to use to erase this threat from the world, do not hesitate. 
I tested it. I tried out, and this is my testimony about the beasts, about the beasts on the Balkans and the beasts in Russia, which can be plenty, plenty, plentiful to see in Russia, in Ukraine today, what's going on about these people. What Ukrainians are running from is exactly what I ran from. I remember what exactly I ran from. At my disappointment, torture did not end. It was Milan Kuchan who became a UNA in a new Slovenia, a big bad wolf everybody was afraid of, and it's why I also deemed that Janez Jansha is a Udba individual indeed. He negotiated with somebody issues that were not his right, not Janez Jansha, not Boucher had a right to negotiate such issues for the sake of any citizen in Slovenia. So I deem that these people are hardcore Udba people. As far as my grandfather being murdered in this institution, this home for elderly people in Maribor, they would continue to deliver me back to the city of the Maribor, to this institution, subject me to the torture all the way to age 19 or 20, when Slovenia would separate, uh, become finalized its independence, I should say. Then they had to stop, along with the Maribor, which is right next to Celje. This is in vicinity of the Celje. Also, the torture in a mention Yugoslav military installations stopped. So this here, this is a novel master city here. This here is a Celje, and this here is a Maribor. And this here is a Ljubljana. Toward independence, it was a new, uh, they expressed desire for the new military installation they would build. This was a solely Slovenian military installation. This is where Jansha and Boucher and Peter Le, they would deliver me here also, but they would deliver me for all the wrong reasons. Straška cesta novo mesto. Well, this is basically where you have uh, hmm. I just need to see something. This is, by the way, where I did serve the military here. Uh, this is also one of the locations where I was tortured inside. 
This is in the city of the Novo Mesto. Uh, this is also this also was a military installation uh, where they would torture me. Uh, however, they tortured me not in the building that you have seen. Uh, they had old buildings behind this that you, you cannot see, I guess, from here. So uh, this here is where I was assaulted. This here is this... Uh, place, if you remember when I told you about a Gejo restaurant, uh, this was probably the most violent location in the whole Novo Mesto city was this place here. They gave oats and literally settled here. Uh, that's so it was interpreted to me to make sure they would have complete control over me in the city of the Novo Mesto. This is how they have presented themselves, these Serbs here, this Gejo. Uh, thanks to these uh, memories, I rewind it back. I know exactly who assaulted me the last time. Or I should say, whom the Novo Mesto police station gave uh, assistance. Because the one who assaulted me, the way I see it, was a novel master police. I am. I am definitely at the wrong uh, at the wrong entrance now. This is the main entrance that you would go to this installation. Uh, and way in the back, you have this old Yugoslav military uh, buildings. Uh, as for this uh, buildings here, uh, I do not know. Uh, I think that part of this stuff already was here, and it was uh, uh, renovated, uh, cosmetically changed, beautified, As for this building here, this is uh, entrance to uh, the same thing, beautified cosmetically uh, also to look better. Uh, this is where I grabbed a Serbian who wanted to climb the fence and would not present me the ID. And it was, uh, he got like a status of general in, in new Slovenian military because I served in Slovenian military, not in the Yugoslav military. He dead threatened. Uh, he all kinds of stuff that he was making moves that he's going to climb the fence, but he did not have ID or anything like this. Uh, so I evaluated the situation. I let one inside and then get him right inside of the guard truck. And that's when I told him that he basically will have to wait for the military police. To visit him, the military police is right there across this guard truck and for any threatening moves, anything like this, that he's going to get bitten up, tied up, arrested and stuff like this. And I was going to really destroy this guy because he really went too far with it. He was a Serb involved in MK Ultra, who became who got like a general rank in a new Slovenian military. It was the guy 
that would come to pick him up, and then he went off with him. Uh, Slovenian military, the best when it comes to Janez Janša and Igor Baucar is uh, explained in a way that the two uh, insisted me. What you see here, they insisted me that this is a newly built building during MK Ultra. This is where the Slovenian military is going to be. Yeah, they dropped me up and they were playing with this stuff. And they were taking me all the way to Celje and they were taking me back all the way to Novo Mesto. Uh, Celje and Novo Mesto, Celje and Novo Mesto. And they insisted me that this is a new building, Slovenian building, uh, mil where m the military is going to be located. Slovenian military is going to be located. And they compared this with installation of the Celje. So that I would not even know when comparing these buildings whether I was in Celje or I was in Novo Mesto. And I think what I stated to you right now must have been recorded by the police. They must have recordings of what I stated. Here it should be used as an ultimate proof about who Igor Boucher was. Loise Peterle and others that just could not stop somehow, they just could not stop whatever this man here started when I was six months old. They just could not stop. Loise Peterle became clearly convinced that I am completely insane and I do not discern during MK Ultra anymore what the Celia is and what the Novo Mesto is. Uh, there was Mount Everest of torture that went on in area of this military installation here in the city of the Novo Mesto with Gedro family guaranteeing that they literally would uh, use a Gedro family uh, to, um, before they would move, before they would move out of uh, Slovenia, uh, and I am not even certain whether the Gedro family was here already when uh, they were here already. They were here already. Um, literally, they would use in Serbs that lived here already. Uh, talking about YNA, talking about the Yugoslav National Military to obtain promises from the Serbs who lived here that they are going to be monitoring me. Yes. Uh, <laughs> and Slovenian, new Slovenian government, newly, newly funded Slovenian state, giving them oath, giving them a pledge that the MK Ultra genocide against me will not stop. It, in fact, it will be this Serbs that would oversee me, that would oversee my case, there would be case completely in the hands of the Serbia and of the Russia. Um, use whatever the fuck you can, whatever the fuck it takes. Burn in front of you Everything Russian you see when it comes to Ukraine, clean it out 
wipe it out if you have to annihilate Moscow, make ground zero. You have my permission. Clean, erase, flat, if you have to. I don't care. This is the day, October the 30th, 2023. I wish, my God, I wish I would fucking flatten you out myself. I wish I have a chance to do it myself. You don't deserve to exist. You are a scum of the earth. Hitler not, but you, you, you made Hitler. You are the ones who made Hitler. Stalin made Hitler. 